The museum wanted to celebrate 100 years of vegetable dyes and we wanted to do that with an exhibition but we thought it was really important to reflect Ethel Murray's passion for wanting to kind of share and teach people that the project, the exhibition, which I'm standing next to here, should have um, an element of um, public engagement. So alongside um, all the workshops that we have at the museum in weaving and natural dyeing, we also wanted the exhibition to grow with people's contributions. And what we decided to do was to try and recreate as many of the recipes that are safe to do, to, to, safe to do by today's standards from the 1916 edition um, and get people to try and recreate those recipes. I'm Jenny Kilbride, I'm a weaver and I live in Ditchling, I have lived in Ditchling most of my life. I was taught weaving by my father, Valentine Kilbride, and his, uh, his history of weaving, of learning to weave and being a weaver is interesting in that it links completely to Ethel Mary and our current project at Ditchling Museum. He was taken on by Ethel Mary as an apprentice. He earned 10 shillings a week and had board and lodging in the house in the winter, but in the summer he lived in a caravan in the field. And he worked with her for uh, 18 months. He, he knew how to weave already, but what he learned with her was her vegetable dyeing techniques, which had been lost really through the Industrial Revolution. And he was completely besotted with the colours that he got, and indigo particularly, and madder. Ethel Mary came to Ditchling um, and set up a workshop there for really teaching people how to hand weave, spin, and use natural dyes. And she, uh, the house was called Gospels, so it was called the Gospels Workshop. And she pretty soon attracted a large group of people around her. Um, when my father arrived in 1924, he said that there were six or seven, mostly women, I think, weaving there for her, producing goods, and there were outworkers around the village doing spinning, um, mostly wool, but some silk, I think, and some cotton, but I would reckon mostly wool, um, and also people doing dressmaking because she had a shop in the in Gospels where people came and bought absolutely amazing what we would call now, I suppose, arts and crafts clothes, woven jackets and berries, and there's so much of their time, and there's examples of them in the museum at Ditchling, really worthwhile having a look at. It was a great big open um, hall, really, beautifully furnished, with a balcony at one end, and the looms on the ground level and bits of cloth hanging from the balcony as far as I remember but people talked about these baskets all over the floor of yarn that were dyed with wonderful colours and so when you were making a warp I think the pupils had a huge um, freedom to choose what they were going to do they could choose from all these wonderful baskets of coloured wool and fleece so I worked with expert natural dyer Jenny Dean who lives locally and she went through the first edition with a fine tooth comb and worked out what recipes we could use and actually we couldn't use many, uh, we couldn't use a lot of them actually because she found things like arsenic in there and chrome and quicklime. Um, chrome was used an awful lot in the mordanting of fibres so we omitted all those recipes using nasty chemicals and she came up with this list of about 600 um, potential outcomes um, that people could take part, read the book, which is really interesting for a lot of dyers, and have a go at mordanting and then dyeing one of their own skeins in wool, silk, cotton and linen. And those are the skeins that you can see hanging next to me here. So it's been a fantastic project so far. We have over 170 skeins currently on display um, and over 80 people from around the world have taken part. So they're getting to learn, um, try recipes that they haven't before, try new techniques and methods that they haven't before. Um, and the end result is this fantastic display of different colours.